Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV out here in the sun today, but come along with me as we check out this Lance 2465. Let me show you up front here how to get this thing hooked up to your tow vehicle. Um, it comes equipped with the LCI Smart Jack. Uh, so raising and lowering is all done electronically, very easy to do. I will show you how to do that in just a second. But to get this thing hooked up to your tow vehicle, it's gonna have to ride on a two and five sixteenths ball. So once you get back under it and get everything situated there, lower down onto the ball and all you've got to do is pick up on this cup uh, latch here and slide it forward. Once these ears right here on the back fall all the way in, that's going to be completely latched and secured and ready to go. Once you get latched, it does have a safety pin here. Just pull your little clip out there. It's going to fish through and then that pit clip's going to go back in the hole on the end of that, just like so. And that's going to keep you all hooked up so this latch can't come open. When you get ready to remove, uh, or unhitch, just remove the clip there and then lift up on the back of this and you're just gonna slide backwards and that's gonna stay all the way back and that's gonna be released from the ball. A Couple other things you have to be hooked up are gonna be our safety chains. Now in the state of Texas, these do need to be crossed uh, to create kind of a basket underneath and then they're just gonna clip onto your receiver hitch. We've got your seven way cord here. This is gonna plug into your tow vehicle and it's gonna uh, run all of your turn signals, running lights, uh, brake lights, and electric brakes on the trailer if your vehicle is equipped with a brake control. And last but not least to get hooked up is gonna be your safety breakaway cable for the electric brakes. Uh, this does needs to be routed on its own, not through the safety chains, and needs to be on its own clip connecting to the receiver hitch of the tow vehicle. Uh, this is designed to be pulled out of the breakaway box that's mounted on the frame in here. Uh, if you get completely separated, uh, this is designed to be pulled out of that box and apply the electric brakes on the trailer to bring it to a stop. So important piece to be hooked up there. All right, our LCI Smart Jack. So this thing has some cool features on it. Uh, right over here on the side on the sticker, it tells you how to use some of these features. Um, it's got hitch height memory, so you can recall that hitch height after you unhook. You program it by pressing and holding the up and down for five seconds. And then when you want to recall that memory, um, you're just going to push the up and down buttons three times and then holding it on the third. It's going to automatically return to that height. Makes it great for loading so you don't have to guess and play the back and forth game. You just do that. It's automatically going to raise back up to where that hitch height was saved and you're good to go. It also has auto retraction. So when you're uh, lowering down and you're ready to get loaded, you're gonna push the uh, down button three times, uh, holding it on the third until that jack starts to retract on its own. Then you can let go and finish doing all your hooking up. So it's a pretty cool jack. It does a lot of cool features and makes life a little bit faster for you. Um, if this jack does, uh, it also has a service light. So it's got a little light button here um, and it's got a service light on it for you as well. So if, if this jack does fail on the 12 volt for some reason, Pop this little cap off the top and inside you're going to find a uh, three-quarter drive nut, if you will, um, that you can use to drive this thing manually, crank it up and down if you need to. Uh, moving back from there is going to be uh, your propane storage area underneath this cover. Um, there is a lid that goes on here uh, that you can remove to access the service valves on this uh, unit so you can turn them on and off, as well as accessing your changeover regulator. Now you will have to remove this cover completely to uh, remove the cylinders for servicing, uh, to have them refilled or exchanged, whichever works. Uh, to get this cover off, you're gonna undo each of these uh, buckles. There's gonna be four of them, two on each side. Just pop them off. And then this thing kind of has to fish out of here. Um, you just gotta pull forward on it and then it's gonna kind of tilt out like that. And underneath will be our propane cylinders. Now Lance has started equipping their trailers with three 20 pound cylinders. So you've got two that are usable and one is an extra storage tank uh, to hang on to. If you want to remove a cylinder to take it and get it refilled or exchanged, uh, first things first, close your service valve on the cylinder. To the right all the way is gonna be closed, to the left is gonna be open. Once it's closed, go ahead and remove your propane service line there. And then we can Loosen the wing nut. And then you can lift the uh, crossbar and tip your cylinder out and remove it from the trailer. 
Now this can be put into your vehicle and taken in to either have it refilled or exchanged, whatever is available or whatever works best for you. Um, just remember anytime you're transporting a propane cylinder, it is in the upright position for safety reasons. Uh, you don't want it laying on its side. So putting it back in is just gonna be the opposite. We're just gonna fish it back in here. You get it back in, go ahead and snug, on, uh, snug down your wing nut here. This does not need to be cranked down on super tight. It just needs to be snug so the cylinders don't bounce out. Go ahead and reconnect your uh, propane service line. And now if you're ready to go ahead and put that cylinder back into service, you can turn the service valve back on. Now this also has an auto changeover regulator on it, which means if you have both service valves open on your cylinders, uh, this is going to be your primary switch right here. So right now we're pointed to this. It's going to be our primary cylinder. Once this cylinder drains off, it's going to automatically start pulling from the other cylinder. Uh, now this is cool because you get a lot of propane all at one time that you don't have to worry about for extended run. But you also will not know when you need to actually remove and refill one. You don't know when one's empty. So what we recommend doing is leaving one cylinder on, one cylinder off. So, and using the selector uh, switch here to decide which cylinder is in use. So if we're pointed this way, this cylinder's open, this cylinder's closed. When this one empties off, it can be, once it's drained, then we're just gonna turn this to the other cylinder, open it up. Now we can remove this cylinder and exchange it with this one or take it and go get it refilled or exchanged at a uh, propane place. Um, and then to get this cylinder out, if you're going to use it, uh, it's just in, held in with a band clamp. Uh, you're just going to undo this little buckle right here. Uh, when you put it back in, you have to fish this piece right here onto, uh, once you get it fished all the way in, it's just going to snap back down and hold that in place. All right, that should be it that's under there. So then now we just have to put our cover back on. Again, it's gonna be fished on from the side. When you put it back on, the plastic here needs to ride into these aluminum tracks. So just set those in there and then buckle it back on. Same thing on both sides. Uh, don't forget to do this. Uh, these will blow off um, and they are very expensive to replace. Uh, that pretty much covers the tongue. Let's come around and move around to the side here. This first little compartment right here is going to be for our electric uh, stabilizing jacks. So this trailer is equipped with four corner electric stabilizers. This side, which is the off door side, has your main power switch for all four jacks. So you, you, you usually would have to start on this side, turn the main power switch on there, and now you can utilize using all of your jacks. Now these two switches on this side, extend retract, are gonna be just for this side of the trailer. I'll show you where the other two switches are for the other side of the trailer when we get around to that side. This is keyed lock uh, to keep people out of it and messing with your switches. All of our stickers right here, uh, the top one there is gonna be our tire size and our uh, tire pressure. We do recommend that you follow this. This is predetermined by Lance as to what rides. Sticker below, that's gonna be some trailer information, VIN and um, other weight information. This compartment right here is where your batteries are gonna store. Um, they're gonna be standard lead acid deep cycle RV marine batteries. Um, wet, so they do need to be checked. They're not gonna be maintenance free. You just have to pop the caps off of them, check the water level and use distilled water to top them up as necessary. Uh, door is held open with a magnetic catch. Just push it up and it latches onto that right there to keep it open. It's gonna be a keyed lock on one side and thumb lock on the other to protect your batteries. All right, compartment right behind that is gonna be a storage compartment that you can use. We also have your battery disconnect switch in here. So this little switch right here is gonna be your battery disconnect. You can see it says off and on the other side over here, it says on. So right now we're turned on, the key cannot be removed. Um, if you turn it to the off position, you can see that the key just pretty much will fall out. Uh, that's a good intent indicator that the batteries are disconnected. And again, on position. So in storage, you're gonna want it in the off position. Anytime you're in use in tow or anything like that, have it in the on position um, to get proper charge and use of your batteries. 
Now the switch in here is, uh, is gonna be for your front accent lighting uh, that's right here in the front of the trailer. So this can be used at night to give you some light onto your uh, propane cylinders or anything like that if you need to do anything there. Um, again, this compartment is gonna also be secured with a, a key lock and a thumb lock. Now this little storage tray right here that's on the bottom of the trailer is just a, it's a key lock storage compartment. It's a good place to store some stuff that maybe doesn't need to be weather tight. Um, you know, you can, if you have a small enough sewer hose, you can coil it up in there or put your water hoses or any sanitation stuff. Basically use it for whatever you need to. Just uh, remember it's not a watertight storage, so don't put anything in there that's not going to do well with water. All right, so this unit's equipped with two slides. Uh, so just a little bit of a slide maintenance real quick while we're here. Uh, the unit's gonna have slide tracks at the top and the bottom of the slides, those big aluminum geared looking tracks. They need to have uh, lubrication put on them periodically. You're gonna wanna use a good slide lube that has Teflon or TPFE in it. Um, make sure there's no heavy debris. Broom them off a little bit if they've got dirt on them, spray it on, run the slides in and out a couple times to transfer all that lube to the gears in the wall and you'll be good to go. You'll probably wanna do that about every 90 days or so. The other thing is gonna be our rubber seals that go around the slides, top, bottom, and sides. Uh, they make a spray-on lube or conditioner for those, if you will. Uh, it's kind of like tire shine. You just spray it on and, and let it go. Um, and that's gonna keep your seals uh, protected from the sun and it's also gonna condition them, keep them soft and pliable so they do their job and keep water out of your trailer. All right, moving on down the side here. Um, got our storage compartment here on the slide. If you look in there, you'll also see your tire tool there. That's gonna be for removing the lug nuts if you've got a flat um, and you need to remove a wheel off of the trailer to exchange it with a spare to fix a flat. Uh, storage, another storage compartment here. It's just for storage. Again, these are held open with the magnets and they are thumb lock and key lock on both of them. So you can protect whatever you put in there. So this trailer is equipped with uh, two dump two dumps on it. So we've got one up here, which is gonna be our galley dump or our gray, which is gonna be all of our sink and shower water. And then the one that's behind the axle is gonna be for our uh, black tank or our gray tank, I'm sorry, our black tank or our toilet water um, is gonna be where that is. So there's a couple different ways you can hook that up. You can use um, two shorter hoses that come to a Y fitting. Then you can use a single hose over to the dump or you can just move your hose from whichever location you need to have it at to dump. Um, the white handle, pull handle, that's forward of the gray valve here um, in front of the axle, that's way up under there, that's gonna be our fresh water drain. If you're carrying fresh water on board, that's how you're gonna drain it. You're just gonna pull that out and that's gonna dump all that water out um, pretty quick. That's, I think that's like an inch and a half valve, so it goes pretty quick. Uh, we've got a couple of different hookups here on the side. This top one, this trailer, since it is equipped with two air conditioners, comes with 50 amp service. Uh, so it's a pretty heavy duty cord, pretty good size. Um, let me show you how this thing hooks up here. So it's gonna be three prongs, but you can see they've got different designs on them. And then on the side, you've got a big metal piece. And this thing's only gonna fit one way. It's got some keyways on here um, where some little lugs are gonna go. So it's only gonna fit one way. You really can't get it wrong. But once you get it all the way on there, you're gonna give it a little twist to the right. That's gonna be the initial lock. And then you wanna use this plastic lock collar on here. You wanna thread that down, get a good snug connection because you don't want a loose one here. It can cause arcing and overheating and cause some either power issues or actually damage your cord or the receptacle on the side. So get that cord nice and tight. All right, just below that's gonna be our um, park satellite hookup. Uh, park is park cable, so if you're staying in a campground that has the cable option, it would just hook up here. I'll show you how to uh, hook it up on the inside to use park cable. Uh, satellite connection here, so if you're using a portable satellite, it's going to hook up right here. And I'll show you also how to hook up on the satellite on the inside. Uh, two water type connections here on the side. The white one's going to be for fresh water use. Uh, so make sure when you hook these up, you hook up to the right one. The white one's fresh water, which is where you're gonna hook up to a water hose with a pressure regulator to provide fresh water to the trailer. Um, if you're staying in a campground, that's how you're gonna hook up. The black one here is gonna be for a black tank flush. 
So that's going to be to flush the tank um, behind the axle, the dump valve behind the axle. What you're going to do is you're going to want to hook up to this with a designated black gray water hose. You're not going to want to use your fresh water supply hose to flush your black tank. What you're going to do is hook up with that black gray water hose here. Go ahead and turn the uh, water on. Make sure that your sewer hose is hooked up to your black, uh, black tank back here and that the dump valve is open. Let that run for a good five or 10 minutes. That's really gonna help wash that tank out and get any of the debris out that may not have come out. Um, all right, moving on to wheels and tires here. So Lance has already equipped you with a sticker there that talks about checking your wheel lugs. Um, they want you checking them on the first trip, 10, 25, 50 miles. Um, they want the torque spec checked on them. And uh, it's also a good idea to check your torque spec before each trip. Uh, go ahead and give each lug nut a torque check and also a good time to check your tire pressures and make sure your tire pressure is at recommended uh, tire pressure. All right, so just in front of the axle, well underneath the trailer, you're gonna see these two lines right here, one red, one blue. These are gonna be your low point drains for draining out the fresh water system. So we're gonna be putting this thing away for a while, winterizing it, putting it in storage, anything like that. You're gonna to wanna to pop those gray plugs out of there and let the water drain out of the system. All right guys, so on the rear slide here, uh, just a big storage compartment here, got a lot of space. Um, use your judgment whenever you load up these large compartments that you don't overload them. Um, if you put too much stuff in there, you can actually cause problems with slide activation. Um, which leads to other issues. So just use your common sense, don't overload it. Now, both of these uh, slides are equipped with a slide topper or a slide awning. Uh, these are great, helps keep debris and stuff off the top of your slide. Still a good idea to get up there periodically and check and make sure that there is no debris that's gotten underneath them um, that can be going in and out with the slide and damaging the seal. So just remember to check that periodically and make sure nothing's going on there. All right, coming around to the back side of the trailer here. Um, license plate mount's gonna mount up right here uh, once that would come in. Uh, it's equipped with a four inch square bumper. You can remove the uh, plug caps on the end and it's a good place to store a uh, sewer hose. If you've got one that'll fit in there, some of the premium hoses may not fit with the big bayonet fittings. Um, it is also a metal bumper, so if you are putting a sewer hose in there, just be cautious that you don't snag it on anything and actually cause damage to your hose. Uh, this model is already equipped with a rear observation camera. Uh, that is an option, not all of them are gonna come with that, uh, but this one is already there, so it gives you a good view of what's going on behind you uh, while you're driving down the road. It can also be used for a backup camera when you're backing into a spot got your roof access ladder here. Um, remember, as with any trailer, it's a good idea to inspect all your seals and sealants on the trailer every 90 days. You got your roof access ladder here. It makes it pretty easy to get up there. Uh, do yourself a favor, check those seals. Uh, just remember water intrusion is not good for a trailer. Um, so just check it out. Moving on to the door side of the trailer here, just at the back end, you're gonna see a quick connect port right here. Um, this is gonna be for hooking up to an exterior uh, gas propane quick connect line for either a grill or a, um, a fire pit, something like that, that you want to hook up here and run off of the trailer propane. So you would hook in, you just push this collar back. It's going to be a quick connect fitting. You push in, let the collar go, and that's going to secure your line. Now there's a gas valve on the back here that does have to be turned on to allow the gas flow. It's also a safety feature because once it's engaged, you cannot undo this, uh, undo the line. You can't push the collar back. Uh, so when you get ready to remove it, make sure you turn that off first, then push your collar back. And when you're in travel, make sure you put your dust plug in so you don't get uh, road grime in there. Also back under here, uh, we're gonna find a crank mechanism right here on the side. This is gonna be for lowering our spare tire that's right here under the trailer. This is gonna work just like on your car. You're gonna crank this down and that spare tire is gonna lower to the ground and on a cable, you're gonna remove the center piece out of it and then pull your spare out if you need to. Hopefully you won't, but that's where it's at if you need to. Uh, mount right here, this is to actually bring a TV to the exterior of the trailer. Mount it up on the side here. They've already supplied this piece for you. And then they've given you all the connections, different connections here that you may need um, to hook up to it. We've got a charge port with two USBs right here on the exterior. 
And then we've got uh, two 110 outlets right here as well. So you can hook up to a TV there and run some stuff. Outside shower just above the uh, axles over here. Very easy to use, hot cold mix. Mix it up however you want it. When you get ready to use, you're just gonna push down on that lever and that's gonna allow all the water to come out. When you're done, you just push back on it. Now, a couple of things on this. When you winterize, don't forget to winterize it. It is a uh, number one, pretty much a number one freeze point uh, since it's a, uh, water and it's on the exterior of the trailer. The other thing is, is when you get done using it, make sure you turn your mixing valves off. Uh, these can actually cause water to mix through the system and you may only get like lukewarm instead of hot water. All right, got a good size storage compartment here on the side, it's just exterior storage. It's gonna be thumb lock and key lock. Uh, the two white circles here are gonna be your exterior speakers. And this is gonna be for your vent hood for the oven or the uh, cooktop. So when you're cooking, if you wanna use the vent hood, you do need to pop this vent flap open. It's just gonna be these two tabs here. Just push out on them, you can see that opens up. Um, and that way the vent hood can actually remove all the uh, the uh, smells or oil, uh, smoke, whatever, from the trailer. Just remember when you get ready to travel, this does need to be latched. You're just gonna push in at those clips and you should hear a good audible click. Um, that way that flap stays in there as you go down the road. All right, this big cover's already been removed here on the side. This is gonna give you access to the lower, lower portion of your refrigerator. Uh, a couple things in here for you. Uh, 110 outlet right here on the side. This is actually dedicated to your refrigerator. And then there is a little manual gas shutoff knob right there. If for some reason the electric, uh, electrical valve on this fails, uh, you can close that off and keep the gas from flowing through uh, versus having to shut the propane off to the whole trailer. Um, it's a good idea to get in here and inspect for bug nests or anything like that that could affect the operation. Uh, PC boards over here on the side. Uh, there's a couple of fuses in there. So if you're working with somebody remotely, they may have you check this stuff. Uh, it's a good idea to at least know where it is. Now, this is a condensation drip tube. It is normal to see condensation drip out of this. It does need to be fished through one of these louvers um, on here whenever you put it back in. Uh, when you put it back in, uh, all of the tabs are gonna go to the top. And once you get here, make sure you get these snapped in and that you get these locked. So to lock them, they're gonna turn and the slot in them should run like this right here. And that's for both of them. Um, if you forget to lock those, it's a good chance that this will blow off while you go down the road. So just remember to latch it. Uh, below that, we're gonna find your furnace exhaust. Um, this is gonna get hot. Anytime you're running your furnace, you're burning propane gas to generate heat. So all the exhaust comes out here. It does get hot, don't burn yourself, don't cover it, don't put anything in front of it. All right, that's gonna bring us to our fresh water fill. So if you want to carry water with you to use on the side of the road, or if you wanna dry camp, anything like that, you're gonna put all your water in right here. Take your water hose, put it in, uh, and turn it on, and all you're gonna do is fill it up until it backwashes out at you, or you can monitor the monitor panel on the inside and see your tank level there. Um, and then I will show you how to use the water pump to extract the water from this. Just below the, uh, the freshwater tank fill, we're gonna find two more of those low point drains here for you. Uh, again, you're just gonna remove these two gray caps and allow that water to drain out. All right, that's gonna bring us over to our gas electric six gallon water heater. Um, not a whole lot here. Again, you're going to want to open this up and check for insects that can get into the burn chamber here or the gas tube that could cause some functionality issues. Um, there's a drain plug that goes in that little hole right there. Uh, that's how you're going to drain the water heater off. You're going to want to do that anytime you are not going to be using it for a while, putting it up, winterizing it, anything like that. Pull that drain plug out and let the water drain out so it doesn't get nasty in the system. Um, I recommend keeping a couple extra of those drain plugs on hand with you. Uh, they are kind of plastic or Teflon, if you will, um, and they can cross thread kind of easy and then they don't seal up well. So it's a good idea to keep some extras on hand in case you do accidentally cross thread it. Um, pop off valve up here at top, right here at the top, this brass looking valve. Um, anytime you get ready to fire up your water heater, you're gonna wanna make sure that there is indeed water in it. So if you haven't used it in a while and you've drained it off, 
Make sure you've got water in the water heater before you fire anything up. You can check it right here by opening that up. If water comes out, it's full of water. If it's just air pressure that you hear coming out, continue to fill the system until you get water completely in the water heater so you don't burn anything up. Now to get into this thing, it's just this little D-loop right here at the top. Um, it's got a spring on it, so it pulls out towards you. Just line it up here, um, pull out on it and give it a twist, and then you can fold that over and that's gonna keep it closed. Um, entry door grab handle. So this thing can be stored in two different positions. It can be stored facing towards the rear of the trailer, or you can store it over the door, whatever makes you more comfortable. It's not gonna matter, but this is spring loaded. So you just pick up on it and put it to whichever position you need to use it in. This is equipped with a uh, double entry step here. So very easy to store. Just gonna grab your bottom step, fold it on top of your top step, and then grab right here underneath and kind of just give it a push and it's gonna just kind of rotate right in. Uh, to use it, it's just opposite, just pull it straight out and then fold the bottom step down, just like that. Um, that's gonna bring us up here to our stabilizer jack compartment on this side. This is gonna be for the door side stabilizers only, front and rear extend retract. Um, when you run these down to the ground, and this goes for all four, after you get the trailer level side to side, front to back, you're just gonna run these down, push the extend button until they hit the ground. They're gonna hit and they're gonna kinda um, you're gonna hear them hit and they're gonna give a little bit of a lift and then they're gonna quit and that's all you wanna do with them. That's good, they're not designed to actually lift or level the trailer, they are just for stabilization so when you're walking around in it, it's not bouncing around. Uh, this little port right here below it is for a portable solar panel. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> If you uh, are gonna be dry camping or maybe you have access to sunlight while it's in storage, uh, you can hook up right here with a portable solar panel, get you some sun on it, and that's gonna help keep your 12 volt batteries charged up. On this model, this has the RVLock.com um, electronic entry door lock. You can set your own entry code to it, but you can lock and unlock this electronically. It is battery operated. Um, so you just punch in your code and whether you wanna lock or unlock it, and that's what it's gonna do. It makes it really kind of convenient because then you don't have to carry your keys with you if you're going swimming or to the river or lake or something like that. They also have a key fob that you can program to these, um, kind of like keyless entry into your car that works the same way. All right, guys, that should cover the exterior of our 2465. Let's go check out the inside. Coming in the door of our Lance 2465, up here by our head is gonna kind of be our main area when we come into the trailer for some switches. Um, these two up top are going to be for your two awnings. So this unit is equipped with a long awning for the rear uh, portion of the trailer. And then there's another one that's a shorter awning that's right here over the entry door. So when these are two switches are in the on position, this is going to allow power out to the awnings for your extend retract functions. It also needs to be in the on position for the auto retract for the wind sensor. So these are equipped with wind sensors. So if it gets too windy, they'll automatically retract and uh, roll up to the trailer so they don't get damaged. Uh, they do need to be in the off position for travel. Uh, just below that, we're gonna find some lights. You can see these two right here are gonna be for interior. Uh, so we've got some mood lighting for right over the slide. And then we've got a courtesy light, which is gonna be this one single light right over the entry door as you come in. Now the other one here says awning. This is gonna be for your LED uh, awning light that's on the long awning. Um, <laughs> that's twice, man. Um, and then the other one's going to be for your patio light that's out here kind of about halfway down the trailer. So it's a uh, three position switch. Middle is going to be off. If you push it down to the bottom, it's going to turn on the clear portion of the awning, uh, patio light. If you push it to the up position, it's going to turn on the amber or yellow portion of the patio light. Now the other switch here is going to be for our slide room. It says in out. It's gonna be a Schwintech slide system. All you have to do is push and hold whichever direction you're going for full travel. Make sure you don't run short travels on these um, slide systems. It can get them out of time. So you wanna make sure you go all the way out or all the way in. Always make sure there are no obstructions in the way when you're running it in. Make sure the floor area is clear. When you run it out, make sure that the exterior area is clear that you're not gonna run it into anything. Uh, just below our countertop here, we're gonna find a GFCI outlet just coming in the door. Uh, it's got a trip test on it, um, so you can make sure all that's working like it's supposed to. A couple of key racks. Uh, we've got your fire extinguisher here. 
Biggest thing on this is gonna be the green button on top. Push it down, make sure it pops back up, and that will uh, tell you that you stop pressure in the cylinder and it is usable. In this unit, we're gonna find your Progressive Dynamics uh, power center. Gonna have all your 110 breakers and 12 volt fuses in here for uh, supplying all your power to the trailer. Um, everything is labeled up for you over here so you know where everything goes. Uh, you can get these replacement fuses anywhere. I do recommend carrying some on hand. All right, just to the um, right of the entry door, we're gonna find our sofa area. Uh, a couple things over here, we're gonna have a 110 outlet. We're also gonna have a charge port. Uh, so we've got our 12 volt charge port and two USB ports um, there for you. You also have the same thing at the other end of the couch um, to do the same thing with you there. Now this is a jackknife couch, so it does make down into a sleeping area. Uh, to do that, you're gonna remove this armrest piece first. And then uh, you're gonna put your hand underneath the cushion here, you're gonna pick up. Now you can store some stuff under here. Um, it is kind of a tight area, so you can't put a ton, but you can store some stuff. Uh, once you get it going, it's just gonna come on down and make into your bed area here. Um, now to put it back up, all you got to do is again, put your hand under here. We're going to pick up as far as it'll go. And you'll want to kind of push down and towards the wall as you go. And then all you've got to do is put your armrest back in position. Now you can see that this has these two little metal poles here. There are two little receiving holes down here on the side that they need to fit into. <laughs> Easier said than done. Down enough for my liking. Yours? Oh, yeah. Spinal clamp. There you go. All right, so this trailer is equipped with this large front window uh, that does have uh, two shades on it. So you do have a uh, daytime shade here that's going to be uh, light blocking, uh, give you some privacy. Uh, just to help dim it out, but still allow some good light, natural lighting in. Uh, the other way is actually going to be your nighttime shade. It's going to give you the most privacy. It's going to be the most light blocking. Um, and there is a clip on these, so you can kind of do these like half and half. This little clip right here in the middle to release it. You're just going to push on the top section of it and just spring loaded. It's just going to unclip and then you can separate those shades. Now the rest of the windows in here use kind of a projector style shade. Um, so these actually are gonna pull down and then they kind of stop, right? So this again is gonna be your daytime shade um, and this would be your nighttime privacy shade. Uh, to get them to go back up, you're just gonna give them a quick yank and then they just retract. Um, overhead, you can see on each end, we do have some adjustable uh, lamps. Just have a little push button on them to turn them on and off. The entry door is also equipped with a shade or uh, privacy shade here just retracts up it's got these two tabs on each side the um hang on we're gonna do that one over <laughs> uh so the privacy shade has this pull piece right here it's got these little tabs right here that are gonna latch right into this piece down here you're just gonna pull this down kind of fish these in like that and then that's what actually holds it down this does not stay down it's on its own it does have to go into the clip to get it to release you're just gonna unhook it and you're good to go um now most of your windows in this trailer also crank open have these cranks on them to open them up all you have to do is uh, flip this little handle out and then you're just going to rotate them until they open and that goes for pretty much every window except for your fire exit window which i will show you how those work now all your overhead lights are turned on and off individually with a switch that's on the light itself on the side to turn them on and off. Um, back to the front sofa area here. If you are having some slide issues possibly, or you're calling in and somebody says, check your slide board uh, for codes or anything like that, the end of this cushion right here actually pops off. Um, all you've got to do is pull out on it and it's going to completely remove. And in here, you're going to find your slide board. Um, it's good to know where that is just in case you do have some uh, functionality issues. It's going to be that board right in there.
All right, moving over into our slide here, uh, our slide out, dine out, uh, our dinette slide out. Uh, we do have a uh, rheostat dimmer for our lights overhead here uh, that can be used to power the lights on and off. You can also use the push button right on the light to turn them on and off as well. So if this isn't working, make sure somebody didn't turn that off that you didn't know about because um, it will keep them from turning back on, as you can see. So make sure that that switch is indeed in the on position. Um, again, all of your windows here, um, your crank out here, your fire exit window is gonna be on a push bar. So you just have to unlatch this here and then you can push it out. Now this can be used as a ventilation window in that position there where you just uh, latch it down. If you're gonna use it as a fire exit window, this is actually gonna push all the way out. Uh, to crawl out of it, you're just gonna grab those two red tabs, yank that screen off, push that window out and climb out. Now the two side windows in here are sliders. They go up and down. Uh, they just have latches at the top and much like a home window and they just slide up and down. Now your dinette uh, benches have good storage in them on both sides, have drawers, little push button here. You're just gonna push it and let that pop out. Make sure that this is unlatched before you start pulling on the drawer so you don't cause any damage to it and you do have a good amount of storage in here. Now these covers are gonna be specifically designed to fit your uh, vents and your skylights throughout the trailer. They're gonna be Lance's four season vent covers uh, for temperature control. Um, they do a great job. They just snap on very easy. Now this also makes into another alternate sleeping area. Um, I like to get my cushions up out of the way. It makes life easier for me. So I tip them up and then underneath the table here, there's gonna be a latch lever. You're gonna to wanna to tip that down so it's pointing down to the ground. And then I grab, I kind of put weight right in the middle of the table and you're just gonna push straight down. And once you get it all the way down, reach your hand back under there and fold that lever back over. Now all you've got to do, slide your big cushions. They're going to stay into the back pieces. The little back pieces are going to come to the middle, like so, and now you've got your alternate bed. Now putting it back up is just going to be the opposite. Uh, that table is going to come all the way up, and don't forget to put your latch bar the first time you go to lean on it while you're eating, table is going to go down. Um, all right, bring us over into our kitchen area. So overhead here, we do have a nice size storage compartment. Owner's manual bag, it's got all your good stuff in it from Lance. Um, you'll also see back up here in the corner, a uh, 110 outlet. That's gonna be your designated outlet for the microwave. As you're putting stuff in, taking stuff out, make sure you don't knock that loose. You also have a little switch over here in the corner. That's gonna be the switch for the cabinet lighting in here. So when you close the door, it's gonna go off. When you open it, it's gonna turn on. Um, at the countertop here in the back, right behind the faucet, we're going to have your um, waste basket. It's removable and it also has a cover that goes over it so you can optimize your counter space. Um, now your sink also has covers over it for um, countertop space. Uh, the faucet's very easy to use. It has a dual sprayer head controlled with these uh, two buttons here on the head. It is um, extendable and then water flow is uh, the stem here on the side. You're gonna push it away from the faucet like this and then temperature control away, uh, away from you will be hot and towards you will be cold designated by the red and blue there on the control. Got some uh, storage drawers here. Uh, on this model, Lance is using the soft close drawers, so you just have to get them to a certain point and then they go on their own. Underneath, we're gonna have some good storage. And we are also gonna have access to the backside of your water heater and access to your water pump. Now this is good to know for winterization. Um, so there is a valve right down here that's kinda, you can't really see it, but there's a valve right here. And this is actually the instructions for the valve. So if you just read that, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do to bypass the water heater. Uh, the reason we do that is we don't need six gallons of antifreeze going into the water heater. Now the other part you're gonna need for winterization will be this clear tube and this other valve or this uh, uh, that's right here. So right now, the way this is positioned, we're allowing water to come through the pump and then to the rest of the system. If we turn that, that's actually gonna 
apply suction to this clear tube instead of from the fresh water tank and then we can winterize the unit very easily. We've got our high point uh, microwave in here. It's kind of a convection style or hot plate style, so there's actually not a turntable in it, um, but they do a good job. Just set your time, cook your food up, good to go. Uh, your vent hood, got a light on it as well as a vent fan. Remember, if you're gonna be using the vent fan, make sure you have the flap on, on at, uh, open on the outside. So these are nice splash guards here. Um, whenever you're cooking on the cooktop, make sure you're using small enough dishes that you're not using a giant like iron skillet or something that's too big. If you actually generate too much heat, you can deform uh, some of this stuff. So remember to be using RV size stuff as you're cooking. Uh, to open this cover up, it actually has the steps right here on the label on top. Uh, but you're gonna take this first half, you're gonna fold it over the back piece, and then you're just gonna tip it up and all the way back, it's gonna sit against the wall to stay open. Now, once we get here, you can light up your burners. Just turn your knob on to whichever burner you want to light. You're gonna use your sparker right here on the side. And you're just gonna rotate that until you get your flame lit. To light the pilot for the oven on this one, you're gonna take your knob here, turn it to pilot. You're gonna push and hold that in. You're gonna to have to use a stick lighter or a match and you're gonna to wanna to light this right here. That's where your pilot light's gonna light. Uh, once it gets lit, hold the pi uh, knob in for about five to 10 seconds. Once you let it out, if the flame stays established, you're good to go, set your temperature, do your uh, baking and then shut it off. Now, since this does have a glass cooktop cover on it, we do recommend that you completely let your burners cool before you close the cover back over them. It's going to be the return air grill for your furnace so make sure anytime you're using your furnace that you are not covering or blocking that the little black output uh, vents that you see down there around the floor uh, throughout the trailer are going to be the heater output um, before we cover stuff along the ceiling in here let's go ahead and talk about your jensen tv your entertainment center that you've got going on here um, i think this one does not swing out which means I won't be able to show anything behind it. Okay. So where's everything at? Oh, it's right there. Okay. All right. So on the uh, Jensen TV, it's going to be 12 volt powered. So you can actually use this dry camp and still watch TV. Um, it's got all your connections that you would expect on a today's TV with USB, HDMI, all the goods that you can hook up all kinds of stuff to it if you need to. Uh, countertop space here for um, hooking stuff up, uh, 110 outlet there, so probably a good place to put like a satellite receiver box. Um, and then in this little compartment, you're going to find some hookups. So we've got a, uh, another 110 outlet over here. Uh, this little uh, cover right here can be removed to access uh, wiring and stuff like that if you need to. And then over here on the right, you're going to see your uh, satellite inputs. Um, so this is actually gonna be from your uh, exterior satellite, and then these will be your ins and your outs for your uh, receiver to your TV and all that. Because um, most satellite receivers are HDMI out to the TV these days. Uh, we've got a Jensen Entertainment uh, stereo here. It's gonna keep, be how you control all your speakers, volume, um, you can play DVDs in it. Um, it's gonna connect all your stuff. It's got the HDMI arc on it, so it's got two-way communication from the TV to that and to control everything. All right, guys, so if you're gonna wanna hook up to part cable, you're gonna have to turn this little booster button off back here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there by my finger. There's a little button there that you can push, and when you turn it off, that'll actually allow the uh, cable signal to pass through and come through the, to the TV. So what you gotta do is push it, and it'll be in the out position that'll turn it off. Now, if you're gonna use the over-the-air antenna that does need to be turned on, that's gonna provide power to your uh, rooftop antenna, which is gonna be the King Jack antenna that's right here over my head. Um, now, it's got an attenuator knob on it, uh, so you can boost your signal strength. You're gonna want as many blue lights as you can get. The more blue lights, the better the signal. Uh, you can rotate it just by pushing in on the thumb lock here, and then you can rotate that antenna about 360 degrees in either direction, give or take a little bit to um, tune that in. Now, there's a little on off switch here on the side. All that does is turn these lights on and off. So you can turn this on, uh, see how many lights you can get. And then you just flip that switch, that'll turn the lights off. So you don't have to, uh, you know, if it's dark in here or whatever, they're not distracting. Uh, right next to that, we're gonna find your smoke alarm, nine volt powered, just flips open. 
check it, replace the battery as needed. Um, Starting back kind of by the couch, we've got your Dometic uh, three-speed vent fan here with uh, thermostat control as well. You're just going to crank that sucker open. I use that word sucker again. <laughs> You're just going to crank the vent open and then uh, choose your speed. One, two, or three are off if you don't want any fan. Um, and then you can do the uh, thermostat here that uh, will turn the fan on and off based on temperature. Now again, I talked about the Four Seasons shades that snap over this, uh, insulated shades. They just snap over it and um, will uh, add to some uh, temperature control for you in here. So in this one here is just a big skylight with a shade on it. So you can open and close that. You can see that that allows a lot of light in. So if you don't want it all that bright, but you don't want to put the Four Seasons shade on, you can just close it up like that. Overhead, we've got our Coleman air, uh, air conditioner got a couple of vent selections here on the ends where you can control the uh, registers. You've got two smaller ones right here that turn straight down. Now on each side of this you do have your return air filters. You just pluck these two little tabs down and that thing's going to pop out and inside you're going to find your filter. You can fish that out of there, clean it with some warm soapy water, let it dry and then put it back in. And then just snap your cover back on and you're back in business with your air conditioner. Uh, now, I did forget to cover a couple things over here. We do have uh, two light switches. Uh, the sink light's going to be the primary light right here over the sink. And then we have your uh, soffit lights, which will be these two right here. And we also have your um, monitor panel or your convenience center. Uh, so this is going to be how you check your tank levels, battery condition, um, all that good stuff. So black tank, gray tank, fresh tank. You can tell how full they are. Um, so if you're filling your fresh tank, you can do it this way versus allowing the water to wash out if you don't want to carry a full tank. Um, and then we've got your water pump, water heater, and water heater. Now water pump, if you're dry camping, you're carrying water on board, um, this is how you're gonna extract that water. You're gonna flip the switch on, water pump's gonna come on, suck water out of the fresh water tank, and provide pressure to the plumbing system. Uh, water heater, uh, top middle switch here that's going to be for the gas side of the water heater so if you want to run it on propane gas you're going to flip the switch on a little gas light's going to come on and um, everything's going to go into use and it's going to just keep on trucking along on gas thermostatically controlled uh, the other option is going to be electric uh, if you have the electric side on light's going to come on for electric now you can run both for faster recovery time if you just want to use the 110, just turn on the electric portion, middle switch. If you just want to run gas, turn on the middle switch. <laughs> um, man, I am all over the place. Sorry. Uh, back over underneath the TV, we do have a fireplace. Um, it's going to have be remote controlled. It's also got um, switches on it right here. You just open up this little door and you can turn it on and off and can control everything with it right here. Uh, just around the corner from that down at the floor, we've got your LPCO alarm. It's got some lights on it, and it'll make a bunch of noise if it detects any kind of gases that it should not. Um, now, on our refrigerator freezer, little latches on the sides that you're going to push to open it um, to get in. And you have to have the freezer door open to get to your controls, or at least to make it easier to see them. So we're gonna have uh, three buttons on this. We've got our on off, our mode, and our temp set. So on off is just that, just push it. All the lights are gonna come on and then it's gonna drop back out once it decides what it's gonna do. So if you want to select your modes, it's either gonna be auto or it's gonna be LP gas. So if you're in the auto mode, it's gonna automatically choose your most reliable source. So if you're plugged into 110 power, it's gonna run on 110 power. Um, if you unplug from that or the power goes out, while you're plugged in, it's gonna automatically switch to LP, uh, which means it's gonna light up on gas as long as you're, uh, you have plenty of propane and good 12 volt battery on board. Now, if you'd wanna manually force it to propane, just push that mode and your LP light will come on. That's LP gas only. That's the only thing it's gonna operate on. And then temp set, you've got one through three on that. Um, as the light moves left to right, it gets colder. Uh, good thing on refrigerators, they t uh, these style refrigerators, they take 12 to 24 hours to completely cool. Uh, we recommend trying to make sure whatever you put in it's already cooled off to help with the efficiency of it. Let's keep moving backwards here into the hallway. 
Uh, so you do have a pocket door here that separates the front of the trailer to the rear of the trailer. Just latches up to the wall here and you would use this little push button to release it um, if it's latched. It also has a snap strap for travel that goes across it so the door doesn't slide back and forth while you're driving down the road. That will cause damage. Do not forget to latch it. Um, and we've got our thermostat here for the air conditioner. Um, big button is going to be for our main control. So you just push it and you can see here your uh, fan high, fan low, all that's going to switch through uh, to start. So, and then you've also got heat on here. So off and we've got fan. So that's going to be fan only where you can change your, uh, if you just continue to push the big button, you can see it goes to fan high. And then our next one's going to be cool and we're already on fan high fan low or fan, uh, fan low auto, fan high auto. We recommend fan high auto. Um, that way you don't end up with any freeze up issues or anything like that. And then the next step would be heat. The uh, up and down arrows are gonna be for your temp desired temperature setting. This little black cover down here on the floor is gonna be access for plumbing access into the bathroom. Um, that's all that's for, so not a whole lot going on there. Um, so we've got a split vanity bathroom area here. So as you come into the hallway, your vanity is going to be on one side. Your actual bathroom is going to be on the other. Uh, vanity's got all your, your typical with your uh, medicine cabinet. We've got your towel, your towel cabinet, a bunch of storage drawers. It's got a uh, dirty clothes hamper in here. Underneath, you've got some storage. You'll also see down there at the very bottom is going to be some furnace ducting and some other things there. So probably not going to want to store a lot down on the bottom of this uh, cabinet here. We've got a 110 outlet just underneath the sink. And then the sink uh, flow control is going to be the stem up and down. Um, hot's going to be to the left. Cold's going to be to the right. And we've got your light switch right here on the wall. The overhead light in the hallway is going to be switch controlled. And then that's gonna bring us into our bathroom. So bathroom door opens up. The light for the bathroom is gonna be this switch that's on in the hallway here. Red light says bath light, it's for the bathroom. All right, so we've got our uh, foot flush toilet in here. Uh, so the way this works is halfway down is gonna put water just in the bowl and you'll want plenty of water in there. Do your business. When you're done, you're gonna push it all the way down. You can see that the ball valve opens in the bottom. Everything's gonna go down into the black tank. Uh, make sure you always use plenty of water. Make sure you use an RV toilet tissue and make sure you're using some kind of tank treatment to control waste digestion and odors. Um, another storage cabinet in here. Uh, overhead, we do have a vent fan switch on it so you can control the vent or the fan in there. Uh, shower's got an adjustable head. There's a little button on the on the far side of this uh, where you can push that and then slide that up and down. Shower head's got a flow control lever on it here um, to adjust how much water's coming out. And it's a single lever mixing valve on this, so you just adjust that till you find your desired temperature. Shower door um, just pulls shut till closed with a magnet. Once it gets all the way over, it just stays shut. Heading back into the bedroom. So we've got another pocket door here. Uh, so you can completely close off the bathroom area with the forward pocket door and the rearward. Again, it latches into the wall here, a little push button on it to get it released. And again, it does have a travel strap to make sure you secure that door for travel. So coming back in just around the edge of the wall here, we're gonna have your uh, slide room control. Again, this is gonna work just like the front one. Make sure you run full distance on the slide, check clearances, all that good stuff. We're gonna have another thermostat for your air conditioner back here. And we've got your uh, accent lighting for over the top of the bed. Um, there's another one of these vent looking panels just further down the wall. Um, again, this is gonna be where you're gonna find your slide board for the bedroom. It's good to know where it is in case there is anything that needs to be done. Uh, we've got charge ports on both sides of the bed as well as 110 outlets. Again, we've got some uh, reading lights over the bed, another fire exit window, everything in here operates just like up at the front of the trailer. Uh, same vents, same return filters on the air conditioner. Um, got a bunch of storage space in here, a nice flat space here. And we've got a hideaway TV in here, which is controlled with this uh, switch right here that says extend or retract just by the door. So. This thing just sinks down into the cabinet.
And then to extend it back up, you're just gonna push the extend and it's gonna bring it back up. So if you don't need the TV and you need some workspace, man, lower that TV down and you can really open it up in here. All right, so the this is a different light here. Um, it's actually got a rocker switch on it for turning this light on and off. There's another smoke alarm by the rear window in here. Um, and we've got some underbed storage. So pretty good space here to have stuff to store under the bed. Now this is held up with uh, support struts uh, to help keep it open, but it also has a latch over here on the side. So when it's closed down, you can act, you're actually supposed to latch this shut and that way it doesn't pop open while you're going down the road or anything like that. All right guys, that should cover the interior of your Lance 2465. However, if I have missed anything or you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. And again, this is Cody with Princess Craft RV.